The overall game plan of a rushdown character can be summarized as get up close and do mix ups, but due to this, it gets a bad rap and is thought of somewhat poorly and overly simplistically, and newer players often misunderstand how they can go about doing it. In this video, I will explain my thoughts on playing rushdown and some of the principles I try to follow. Team composition. To build a team suited for rushdown, you have two major aspects to focus on. Either build a team that has an easier time getting in, or build a team that has an easier time staying in. Typically, you balance out what is lacking in your own playstyle. If you feel more comfortable adapting in and winning scrambles by yourself than actually getting in, your team should try to be better at getting you into those spots, rather than giving you better up-close mix-ups and struggle to get you in. A character like Philia can really show the spectrum of these options. If you play Philia with Brass, which is a functionally full-screen armored assist, she can call it whenever she has frame advantage in neutral and get in behind it. Here she can scramble high low throw or bait the reversal, and if she guesses right she gets the hit. But if she guesses wrong, the best case scenario is that she gets pushed back to neutral, and the worst case is she gets hit somehow. On the other hand, if you play Philia with Seracopter, you don't really have an assist you can call from full screen, so you have to be more patient. But if you find an opening yourself to get close and force some high low mix ups, you can then call Copter to get your turn again. The key difference between these styles is that, with Brass you sacrifice a mix up on the initial opening for securing your way in with the big armor assist, and with Seracopter you essentially get two guesses, but it's harder to position yourself to find and create openings. There is nuance with other assists such as H-Beam and M-Bomber, but these are the most classic examples. In both of these team constructions the underlying concept is the same, you look for an opening that lets you get in and hopefully stay in. The difference between the two is how simple it is for you to get in and how reliably can you turn that into a hit. What happens if the opponent is not providing you such openings? You have to get good at creating them, and this is where the true skill lies in being a rushdown player. Openings stem from time and distance. Creating openings is not only limited to finding the good spots on the screen to get to, but also recognizing time as a factor for creating mixups in your favor. The goal is to stay unpredictable yourself, yet goad the opponent into making a predictable move that you can take advantage of, whether it may be pushing them towards the corner, making them commit to an option you can counter, or forcing bad assist calls, among other ways. Special note, solo. Solo players often get a bad rap in Skoggle scene for playing easy mode or just solo BBS's JLOL, but playing solo mode aggressively has a lot more going on than that. If we compare solos to our two kinds of teams, we see that they neither have an assist to allow them to get in, nor an assist to let them stay in. Their niche however comes from only playing one character, which is simpler than playing multiple characters, and having really high damage. Which means any individual read will do a lot of damage to a character in a duo or trio scenario. Hopefully these points give you enough to chew on as you try to create your own strategies. Thanks for watching. Since this is the 10th video, I'm finally into double digits, so I wanted to make a special outro. Thanks everybody who's watched these videos and promoted them and all that, especially since you've got to the end, you must be a dedicated supporter. I'm sincerely grateful for everybody who's promoted my videos and watched them and commented and everything. Um, just because every small little comment goes a long way in sort of keeping me motivated to make these series. So, like everybody who says any any tiny things, um, it all goes a long way and makes me really want to keep working at this sort of stuff, which I really like. Um, as always, if you guys have any comments, queries, questions, any feedback, please let me know. If you guys have any topics you want me to cover, please let me know. I have some stuff covered. I should redo my anti-air guide as uh, from a text to a video. I have a guide on push blocking. I have a matchup analysis that I'm working on a little bit. I have a commentary mini-series mini I want to work on with a friend of mine. I have a lot of ideas, but it all depends on what people want to see. So I might even do match analysis if people really care about that. Uh, sort of high-level, highly edited match analysis. I, I would like to get back into it. Always thanks everybody for watching and see you guys in the next one.